the Joe Rogan experience. The physical strain that you guys put your body through is fucking insane. And until you watch, like, you guys compete and do all the shit, like, rucking, like, running with the weight vest on. and Everything, yeah. It's insane. Yeah, yeah, the games, so, like, the games are, like, the big competition. It's, like, it's it's a wild show because it's, sometimes it's five days, sometimes it's three days. And we'll have, like, usually between 12 and 15 events over those days. Do they let you know in advance what you're going to have to do? Some. Like, we might find out in the event sometimes a week or two ahead. Uh, but then, like, we'll have others where we're literally finding out the event as we go. Like, as we're competing. So we don't even know what we're doing on the competition floor. They'll be, they'll be like, all right, start lifting that weight. We'll tell you when to stop when you hit your number of reps. You know, stuff like that. It's... uh it's interesting to train for because you don't know if you're training for a one rep max or a hundred. Uh, you don't know if you're training for a 40 meter dash or a marathon, you know, it's yeah. It keeps it interesting. Like we've had, we've had events that are like 20 seconds long. And then a couple of years ago we had to row a marathon on like the stationary concept two rowers. So like 42,000 meters. So was that 26.2 miles rowing? Yeah. 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 For, yeah 42,000 something How meters. How long does that take? I think the average time was about three hours. I think a couple of people were like three and a half hours. Yeah, because you can't row as fast as you can run, right? Can you? I mean, I would prefer to row a marathon than run one. Just because really? it's easier on the joints. Oh, okay. Like your ass goes numb just from sitting on the seat. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it was just easier on the joints. They did it because they were like, we tested it. And like, after you run a marathon... Like you can't walk for a couple of days. Like your body's just trashed. With rowing a marathon, like you're sore, but you're good to go the next day. It really doesn't. It really though depend <clears throat> on the person and what kind of condition you're in. Because my friend Cam Haynes, that motherfucker runs yeah. a marathon every day. Yeah, I think if you're conditioned for it and that's all you're doing. Yeah, you know, and but he lifts weights too. Yeah, yeah. I've I've met Cam. I met him a couple of years ago. He's got problems. Does he? Yeah, he's crazy. He's <laughs> oh, legit, yeah, yeah. legit crazy. Like David Goggins, crazy. There's a few people that I know that I'm like, what are you doing to yourself? Yeah, you know. Yeah, I, I, I'll watch Cam and yeah, he runs a marathon every day. And it's like, why? What are you doing? Well, like, he that likes, seems terrible. He likes those ridiculous ultra races, like those the Moab two yeah, forties and stuff like that. Yeah, I got a buddy that does all those like two hundred mile, mm -hmm. couple days long. Yep, and it's like. All right, like I get that that's your thing. I don't get it, but, <laughs> but more power it, to you. <laughs> they're just testing. I mean, for Cam, he's just testing his mind. Yeah, he wants to find out when it breaks, you know, and he he can't break it. Yeah, and I, every day he strengthens it. So every day he's running massive amounts of miles. He'll run like nineteen miles in the morning. Yeah, he'll run like six miles in the afternoon. And I mean, I wonder if like if he's ever played with like other challenges, you know, instead of just running. Because I know, like, if I'm practicing the same thing over and over, you, yeah. know, you adapt to it, you get better at it, you get more comfortable with it. And it's like when those curveballs get thrown at you of something that you're not used to. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, that's basically... That's CrossFit, right? That's but, what our training is. Yeah. Like, we're trying to think of different things that can be be the test for us and figure out, like, all right, if this comes up, how do we deal with it? How did you get involved? What, what was... Did you just walk into a class one day and get Kinda excited funny, by so it? So I, I have a background in Olympic weightlifting, did that for 10 years, lived at the Olympic training center. Like my goal was to go to the Olympics for weightlifting. And then that didn't pan out and like started focusing on school. And then I just kind of, I guess, just gained the freshman 15. So I was like, all right, I either need to start working out again or change my diet. So I was like, oh, I'll start working out. And, uh, you know, trying to find it an Olympic weightlifting gym is they're like a needle in a haystack, but CrossFits are everywhere. And so I just like Googled CrossFit near me because they, they use all the same equipment, like the barbells and bumpers. And so I just showed up, introduced myself. I was like, Hey, like, I don't want to do your CrossFit thing. I'm, I'll be in the back room just doing clean and jerks and squats. And, uh, just kept doing that kind of showing up on a irregular basis. And then one of the girls from the gym who was a competitor, was just kind of like bribing me into workouts every once in a while. Like, oh, you might be good at this one. Give this one a try. Give this one a try. And the uh, the owner of the gym actually signed me up for my first competition because he's like, hey, I think you have potential in this. You should give this a try. 
And uh, so we made a deal that he signed me up and paid my entry fee. And then if I won any money, he I had to buy a pair of CrossFit shoes. <laughs> and, what are uh, CrossFit shoes? I mean, at the time, it was like the Reeboks, like the minimalist shoes. Okay. Like I was working out in Air Max 90s. <laughs> and so he's like, anything's better than that. And what year was this? This would be back in like 2012. And uh, so anyways, I, I won the competition, got a couple hundred bucks and was like, yo, this is kind of cool. Like just pocket money for a college kid. Like, are there more competitions like this? And so they showed me where to find these competitions. And I just kind of started driving around the Northeast, like all of New England. And if there was prize money at a competition, I was signing up. And so I basically looked at it like a part time job of like while I'm in school full time and broke, I can make some pocket money. And uh, yeah, just kind of. I was like, all right, if I want to keep winning these competitions, I need to work on my weaknesses, get better. And then just kind of fell in love with it. And it just ratcheted up bit by bit until like I'm at the world championships. And I'm like, oh, shit, how did I get here? And then you won (laughs) over and over and over again, which is crazy. Yeah, It's a weird start, man, to something that you not just excelled at. I mean, I think you're the winningest guy ever, right? Yeah. Yeah, I've won, won the been on the podium seven times and I've won it the last five years. That's and bananas. Yeah. I mean, for I, someone who started off as a like, lark. Yeah. I'm, I'm not blind to it. Like I'll be sitting there with my fiance, like, you know, just when these cool opportunities get plopped in front of me and I'm like, how, how did I end up here? Like this wasn't supposed to be my life. You know, I was a mechanical engineer, you know, like I thought my sports career was over with Olympic weightlifting. You know, I broke my back. Like it, it was a whole, what did you do to your back? Uh, broke my L five in two spots. Oh yeah. How? Uh, just training too heavy too often. And, uh, it just fractured the actual bone. Yeah. Yeah. Like the little wings off the side. Oh, and it was on two separate occasions too. Oh it was no. Like, they were like a week or two apart from each other. And, uh, so wait, hold on. You broke one and then you kept lifting. Yeah. I didn't really have a choice. So I was living at the Olympic training center and like, there was a lot of pressure on the program to like produce and I was on the junior world team. I was leaving for Romania in a couple of weeks to compete. And uh, yeah, I was just, I don't know. I wasn't training as smart as I should have been. And so the first one where I was doing like a clean pull. So just like a deadlift with a big explosion at the top and like loud pop on one side. And I dropped the bar and like, it, have you ever seen those heat packs that have the little clicky thing in them? Mm-hmm. It was, that's what it felt like when it like clicked and then it just like, the inflammation just spreading and uh and so you know go to my room lay down for a couple days and then you know it was it was oh i knew something was wrong like i've never had an injury like that you know i couldn't move did you get an x-ray did you get an mri no because it was like the i was leaving for the competition in like two weeks so it was like too late to call the alternate to like replace me so you wait, wait do they know that you're this injured I mean, I told them, like, hey, I... And they're like, like suck it up, pussy? I'm, I'm injured, and I was told, like, hey, there's a difference between pain and injury. And I was like, okay, uh, I'll get back to lifting. And so then a couple of days goes by, and I'm being super cautious, like, basically stripped all the weight out of my training. I'm just moving. And then, uh, what was it? It was heavy back squat. And, like, load up, and you're going for, like, a new one rep max like a week before you get on the airplane and uh yeah i hit the bottom of the hole left side goes oh jesus and so anyways i got went to the competition did terribly you know like the coach was like hey what's your goal for this competition i was like i just don't want to bomb out i just want to make one lift one lift in each and uh, he's like okay we'll make sure that happens i i only made one snatch one clean and jerk and then it was when i got back I like put my foot down. I was like, Hey, I'm not, I'm not lifting shit until I get an x-ray and like they x-rayed it and they're like, Oh yeah, there's break right here, right here. And what did the coach feel bad? Uh, I mean, I feel for him now that I have a little more life experience and like, you know, at the time hated the guy. Um, but now that I know the situation he was in, he was under pressure for keeping his job to like, Hey, you need to produce athletes. Like none of the American athletes are doing well on the world world scene catch new episodes of the joe rogan experience for free only on spotify watch back catalog jre videos on spotify including clips 
easily, seamlessly switch between video and audio experience. On Spotify, you can listen to the JRE in the background while using other apps and can download episodes to save on data cost all for free. Spotify is absolutely free. You don't have to have a premium account to watch new JRE episodes. You just need to search for the JRE on your Spotify app. Go to Spotify now to get this full episode of the Joe Rogan Experience.